Right, continuing on with the empirical formula. Here, they give us the empirical formula, CH. Give us the relative molecular mass, and we've got to find the molecular formula. Remember, the molecular formula just means the actual number of atoms present in a molecule of the compound. So if we look at it, each of these CH units, see there's a wee CH unit. If we work out the mass of that, we've got one carbon and one hydrogen. So the total mass is 13. We want to see how many of these wee CH units sum up to 78. So what you've got to do is, you know, if each of them have a mass of 13, how many of them 13s go into 78? 78 divided by 13 is 6. Therefore, 6 of those CH units. So the molecular formula is C6H6. There's going to be 6 carbons and 6 hydrogens, and they're lined up. Next one here, the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio is CH2O. Give us the relative molecular mass. We want to find the molecular formula. Um, so again, we want to see what each of these wee units adds up to. We have one carbon. Can't go wrong finding the mass and finding moles generally. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Tally add up, 1830. We want to see how many of these 30s go into 180. Six, therefore there's six of those CH2O units. You know, there's six of those CH2O units. So that means there's six carbons. Six by two is 12 hydrogens. Oh, C6H12O6 glucose. Sometimes it does work out to be the same. If they said the relative molecular mass was 30, and each of them had a mass of 30, then that's also the molecular formula. Don't be put off by that. Um, building on from that is when, again, they give you the relative molecular mass. But in this stage, they don't give us the empirical formula, so we must work it out. They just give us the percentages. Once we see the percentage, Go back, change it to grams, and then go back to moles. So we want to get the empirical formula first of all. So work out the number of moles of carbon. So 85.7. Change that percentage sign to grams. Go back to moles, you divide. And then the number of moles of hydrogen. 14.3 grams divided by 1. 14.3 moles, 85.7. Sorry, that big playoff. 7.14. Now divide by the smallest, which is 7.14, because you want to get that whole number ratio. So you're going to get 2 there and 1 there. Therefore, the empirical formula is CH2. Now you want to see how many of these CH2 units go into 42. So each of those blocks has a mass of 1 carbon, which is 12, 2 hydrogens, which is 2, 14. How many of those 14s go into 42? So there's three of those units. So the molecular formula, I'll just write MF for short, C3H6. Another one here. Again, they give us the relative molecular mass. Give us the percentages. I want to change those percentages to grams. So work out the number of moles of each, number of moles of carbon. 40 grams divided by its mass number, which is 12. Number of moles of hydrogen, 6.66 grams. But its mass number is 1. And then the number of moles of oxygen, 33 grams. Divide that by 16, the mass number. So 53.33 divided that by 16 gives us 3.33 moles. 40 divided by 12, 3.33. Now divide by the smallest, which is each of those. We get one, we get two, and we get one. So the empirical formula here is CH2O. Now we want to see how many of these CH2Os go into 60. Find the mass of each of these units. One carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen, 16, uh, 1830. How many of these 30s goes into 60? There's two. So there's two of these units. Remember, two of those CH2 units 
So the molecular formula, just double now, the empirical formula C2H4O2. And then one more thing, I'll get started here, see if me upload in a few videos, is based on balanced equations. So sometimes you might have to balance them first of all. Here they already are balanced. So when we're looking at these equations, first thing you've got to do is the numbers in front of us tell us how many moles are reacting. So the ratio here is 1. So this would be a 1 in front of it. It's like an algebra. You might write x or 1x to 2 to 1 to 1. Now they give us some bit of information about a reactant here or a product. Here they says we've used 100 grams of calcium. I've just simplified. Told us we've used 100 grams of calcium and we want to find the mass of calcium hydroxide. Now what we always go back to is the moles. We'll find the number of moles of calcium, sub it into their molar ratio and then find the mass of calcium hydroxide. We'll be using again this part of the triangle, moles mass and grams go back to moles you divide by the relative molecular mass of the mass number and when you're leaving moles you're multiplying so here they told us 100 grams of calcium get the number of moles of calcium it's 100 divided by the mass number is 40 gives us 2.5 moles now the ratio for calcium to calcium hydroxide is one is to one that means there's 2.5 moles of this, there's 5 moles of water, there's 2.5 moles of calcium hydroxide, and 2.5 moles of hydrogen. They want the mass of calcium hydroxide, we've got the number of moles, to go to the mass, multiply by the relative molecular mass. So we've got to get the relative molecular mass of calcium hydroxide, 1 calcium, 2 oxygens, 2 hydrogens. Or you can keep that hydroxide as uh, 17. 2, 17 is 34. It's the same thing. 74. And then moles. We know there's 2.5 moles multiplied by the relative molecular mass of 74. 185 grams of calcium hydroxide. Another one here. So once I see a balanced equation, straight away put in the molar ratio. It's 2 is to 1 is to 2. That's not the actual number of moles, but the ratio of them. So here they've told us 9 grams of magnesium was used, how much magnesium oxide was produced. We've got the mass in grams of it. We're going to go back to moles and plug it into the molar ratio. So the number of moles of magnesium, 9 divided by the relative molecular mass is 24. 3 eighths or 0 0.375 moles. There's 0.375 moles of this. To work out the number of moles of oxygen, you just divide it by 2. It's 0.1875. And since it's 2 is to 2, they're the same ratio, 0.375 moles of magnesium oxide, sorry, magnesium oxide. Now, what mass of this here is produced? We've got to get the relative molecular mass of MgO. 1 magnesium, 1 oxygen. Relative molecular mass is 40, and then 0.375 multiply that by 40. We get 15 grams. Go. Two more. That, that equation again. Uh, they've told us to make 100 grams of MgO. How much magnesium? Straight away, start off with the molar ratio. Two is to one. Now, use the information that they give us. What can we do with this? Go back to moles. So, find the number of moles of MgO. We divide by the relative molecular mass. So, remember the relative molecular mass, 1 by 24, the magnesium, 1 by 16, the oxygen, we get 40. So, it's mass in grams divided by the relative molecular mass, we get 2.5 moles. So, there's 2.5 moles of here. Divide by 2 for this one, 1.25, 2.5 moles of magnesium. How much magnesium was required? Mass in grams, or the moles multiplied by the mass in grams. 24, 48, 60 grams, I think, of magnesium. 2.5 by 24. Yeah. And one more. 
here, they're looking at the combustion of ethane and alkane. Just look at the ratio here, it's 1, it's 3.5, this is 2, this is 3. Now here they said 8.4 litres of ethane, so I'll say it at STP, standard temperature of pressure. What is the mass of H2O produced? So we want to get the number of moles of ethane first of all. Number of moles of ethane. Even if you didn't know what ethane was, you know that's oxygen, you know that's carbon dioxide, you know that's water. Now another bit of that mole triangle is, I probably would have put it down bottom right or bottom left, volume of gas at STP. When you're leaving moles, you're always multiplying. And it's at STP by 22.4 litres, 22,400 centimetres cubed. And if you're going back to moles, you're dividing by those 22.4 litres or 22,400 centimetres cubed. Here, they've given me the litres, go back to moles, divided by the litres. So 8.4 litres, divide that by 22.4 litres, will give me the number of moles of ethane. 3 eighths or 0 0.375 moles. Now you can plug that into all of them, or you can be sly about it and just see how they're looking for water. So there's 0.375 moles of this. They've only asked for water. You could ask you multiple questions on it. So the ratio is 1 is 3, so there's 3 times the number of moles of water. So 1.125. Uh, and now what mass? We've got the number of moles. To find the mass, you multiply. So the mass of water, 1.125, multiplied by the relative molecular mass of that, 2 by 1 is 2, 1 by 16 is 16, 18, 1.125 by 16 is 18 grams, oh jeez, sorry, 1.125 by 18, the mass number of this, the relative molecular mass, 20.25 grams, that's it. Practice over those or whatever questions are on the sheet or the textbook.